Hey guys, this is the second episode of the Grey Boys podcast. I am Super Kami William. I am here with my life partner, you could call. What's up? It's Mike Daddy Jean. Uh, we are going to talk about the first Pokemon movie, Pokemon Mewtwo Strikes Back. It came out in 1999. We were five years old at the time. Uh, we are watching the English dub, the version that recently came out in the Steelbook case, not the original VHS and not the Japanese sub. The difference is that what we watched contained Origin of Mewtwo, the 10 minute prequel almost to what right. Mewtwo was, and it doesn't have the Pikachu's vacation. It's really killing Will that that Pokemon short isn't there in the beginning. I can't say that I, I cause like you said, when we were five years old when it came out, I definitely wasn't asking my mom to take me to watch any Pokemon movies. So I didn't know. I don't, I don't even know what Pokemon Short he's talking about. I think the first time I went to the theaters and saw Pokemon Short would have been Pokemon Three, the third movie. That's the first time I saw Pokemon Short, and I thought it was part of the movie. Little do I know that they did it like a little Easter egg for anyone who goes in theaters and watches it. Uh, yeah. For me, I love the Pikachu shorts in the first few movies. I think they they obviously stopped after a while. But, like, the first, the ones that really hit me are the first one. I think the first one might be my favorite. When um, they're chilling at, like, the water park. I love it. Uh, I know it's not considered part of the movie now. Uh, it's just a real bummer that you really can't find it anywhere online dubbed legally. Or, like, even with the, 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 um, the new release of the movies, they don't even include them. And they don't include them anywhere else. So if you want to watch these, you have to, like, go to YouTube and, like, hope to find a decent edit of it. So I, I didn't watch the I, or I didn't see the origin of Mewtwo until this new release. I never knew it was around. And uh, so it's about the first 10 minutes of the movie. And I gotta say, seeing it, I, uh, I can see why they cut it out of the movie. Oh yeah. Um, when I watched it, when I first hit play, and the first thing they have is you zoom into a forest and you just hear whispers. I had to kept, keep pausing the DVD to be like, where does that sound coming from? It is really creepy. Not to mention the whole him being a tube become in like this crystal ball. I'm gonna cut you off right now. Actually, that's part of the original VHS version. Uh, like the who am I? Why am I here? Because uh, so, I was confused. Cause I was watching. It, I was like, okay, this is the movie, and then it starts deviating. It, I, at least the first deviated for me when you see him as a baby. And uh, I thought it was adorable. I'm surprised there's like no merchandise for it, like a card, like nothing in the games. There's no baby Mew in Pokemon Go to hatch. It was really adorable, but uh, really off, not off-putting, but like just the story about it was so depressing. Because um, I was very confused when like he had the dream, and there was like the girl there, and uh, you you see the um, the th you see a Charmander, a Bulbasaur, and a Squirtle with the clone like coloring. Right. And I, I, oh, I thought originally that that's the, um, the Charizard and we, that we see later on. It's not. These are just other clones that they're doing just to see if they can clone. And so they have this whole conversation where she's like, you know, he's, he's saying, what am I? Who am I? And she goes, I think you're a Pokemon. And they have a nice, it's a cute conversation. And then it gets really dark because uh, Thanos comes in and snaps. And they start disappearing in the dust. And not only in the dream, when you go back to the real world... They're gone, and, like, they're not in the tubes anymore. They just disappeared in the... So I don't know how that happened. They turned into goo. Maybe they turned into dittos. I don't know. But uh, it was really... And, and then you also find out that the girl, or this, like, light that's in the tube, is the, is the, uh, the head doctor's deceased daughter that he's trying to clone. So, wait. First, how are you sure they didn't... They weren't cloned? Like, where'd you get the news that... What do you mean? That, that original three, the Charmander, the Bulbasaur. Because oh, they died. They, the insinuation is that, I mean, when you get from the tubes or everything, they died. And it, the, the Japan had radio shows, like we used to have in the 40s. <laughs> and in them, we never got them. In them, they talk about, like, stuff that happens off screen. And it's, it's stated that Mew 2, when he's with Giovanni captures a Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle, and clones them again. And I think names them after the original clones' friends that he had. So those are different clones than the ones we see in the movie part. This movie's really dark on the, in the background. Well, no, it was in the front, actually. 
Uh, I know they go more in depth on the doctor's like wife that she leaves them. Uh, it was really dark. I can see why they were in the movie. Why it wasn't the movie? I'm surprised they dubbed it. Like, did they think like when they were dubbing it, like it's only like, hey, you know what? Watching this whole thing put together, uh, doesn't really like not not suited for kids. Definitely not. Uh, it was alright. It was interesting. Like, it wasn't bad or anything. It was just like a, a surprise. It'd be like, oh, what is this very? Is there a fully like uncut version like in out in Japan or something, or is it just unsent? Like, this is what the producers talked about, and then they were just. I have no idea. But, um, so the official movie starts with Mewtwo waking up. He still has, obviously, amnesia for the whole movie. Like, that, that's never really touched upon again. Uh, and he's, like, hearing voices from the scientists. And he's asking the existential questions that we all ask ourselves. Who am I? Why am I here? When am I moving out of my parents' house? All that kind of stuff. A little hard for a kid. And then he kind of, like... The glass breaks. It's a pretty iconic scene, mm. uh, where the glass breaks. Uh, he's kind of dripping wet, and he like does like the look. He gives him the look, mm. sets stuff on fire, and the whole place blows. Yeah, he, I mean we he can. He kills them all. Yeah, they're hundred percent dead. Yeah, I mean that guy has like that line that's repeated throughout the movie. Regina, Regina creating the world's strongest Pokemon, and we've succeeded. I, it's a really bad line. It's a really no. It's a really good line. It's just it's bad. That it's it's just, delivered bad. It's constantly repeated throughout the movie. There's, like, recordings of it. Uh, so he escapes, and then, maybe, like, three seconds later, not even three seconds, Giovanni's already there on the, explode I the exploded island. He's just there waiting. Uh, and he's just like, well, like, want to strike a deal with me? Yeah, it was weird. He was really just, like, he just knew everything that went wrong already. Like, for him to just land, it was like, oh, that sucks. Like, you're pissed that they used you? So come here, I won't use you. And I was just like, well, you can't just already know how to manipulate him. Like, you weren't there. Yeah, he really, like, it's it's almost like he knows, like, he's, like, listening to his internal monologue, that he knows he's confused, because he really just, like, hits on points that he's really thinking about. And then, so, he works with Giovanni, he gets a sweet battleizer. I actually hate it. Really? I did not like it. I don't like what it did to his head. It made the his mask? head... Yeah. It gave him, like, a... It, mask? I was gonna, it just made his head look a lot longer. Like, he was wearing it for so long. I was like, huh. He didn't need all that space for his head. Uh, well, I mean, they like all, like, things that they drilled into it. Mm. But, so, in it, we get, like, a quick kind of montage while he's just fighting. I think, he, like, it's assumed that he's, like, defending the 8th gym mm. badge. Uh, so he's fighting, like, a whole bunch of... Po they do, like, a quick, like, cut to Rhyhorn, a bunch of Tauroses... And then we get a weird cameo uh, where, From he Gary beats, Oaks. where he beats Gary Oak. And it, I'm pretty sure it's canon. Because in the show, if I remember, when Ash is about to go to the 8th gym, Gary was already there and he talked about how he lost. And then in the show, when Ash goes to fight it, Giovanni's gone and it's uh, Team Rocket, uh, Jesse and James, and me out there defending the gym. And I think that is whole, the whole situation is that he beat Gary Oak, then he betrays Giovanni, and it's like... Right before Ash came through. Yeah. Okay. Which is kind of weird, because... Well, it's not weird. It's, it's really cool, actually, if, like, you pay attention. Obviously, as a kid, I did not put that together. Does that fit perfectly, though? Like, if you see Ash's Pokemons, was that exactly his team towards the end when he was going to the 8th gym? Uh, I... I might, might have been. But we really only did see... He, did he have... only see Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Charizard, and Charm, and, uh... We don't see anything else. Yeah, you're right. He didn't send out anyone else. It's a very safe movie in that sense. So you could literally fit him in that whole series almost. The yeah. first couple seasons. As soon as Charizard hit Charizard then. So finally, for some random reason, Giovanni just like monologues about how he owns Mewtwo. I don't get why. Well, to his defense, he thought the suit was enough to contain him. Like, he was like, I'm safe. Like You can't. But the stuff it wasn't you do? really about containing, it was like focusing his powers, and then at that, by that point Mew had already known how to use, like, I, I didn't see the point of... No, because Mew was that. like, oh, you were supposed to, we're supposed to be partners, but you gave me this that's going to suppress my powers. And he was like, oh no, it's not suppressing your powers, it's just helping you control it. And he was like, okay, I believe you. So, after that, he also blows up wherever Giovanni is, it's another island... <laughs> Yeah, he's just really good at blowing up these islands. Yeah, I thought Giovanni nice would have been dead. They're really nice islands, too. Oh, well, if it's an island, then it couldn't have been um, 
What's the first town? Well, no, I, I think it had to be that because it's definitely. I, I think the. But the Ave Jim the Ave Jim was um it wasn't part of an island. Well, I think the whole idea is that they left the gym for a while, and that's why Jesse and James were at that gym. They okay. left. Um. So then after that, he blows up the island, and then it, with interactions with maybe like five humans, he's like, "All right, I'm going to kill everyone." I mean, that's kind of how I'm on the internet. And their Pokemon. And I guess my idea is, like, he never talked to anyone else while he's, like... I mean, he, I, I'm assuming he's, like, been around with your body for at least a couple of weeks. And it's, like, he didn't talk to another Pokemon or, like, a human who's not his whole douchebag. Uh, but he jumps to that. And then, finally, we get Ash, Misty, Brock, Pikachu, and the main gang. I gotta say, when they came in and everything... And that one guy, the bandana, came in thugging, like, yo. Oh, you mean the, uh, my personal canon? I know in the show, he's credited as pirate trainer, but I looked at him, I was like, is that the original founding member of Team Aqua and Magma? You know what? I thought the same thing. I actually, during the movie, I paused it right where, and, and I was up. like, that's the wrong colors. But on the right, I, I looked Aqua's it up. Aqua's logo, 100% the bandana, but with Team Magma colors. And I was like, you know what? I kind of want them to go back and be like, no, 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 that was like the founder. And like his two kids split off. I know it wouldn't make sense, but Ash is immortal anyway. So his two kids split off and they fight and they create two warring factions. That would have been an amazing thing. It really would have. But he came and he challenged Ash to... He said he was looking for him too. He was. He was like, hey, I'm looking for Ash. Catch him from Power Time. Which I gotta say, I always like that about the Pokemon world. You're, you're, where you're from is also part of, like, your title. Like He's always knight. at Ketchum from Palatine. And I was just like, that, that just sounds dope to me. But he came and he challenged Ash to a Pokemon battle. I'm, okay, cool, let's see. And I, they, the music choice was cool and everything. I like, when the fight starts, we finally, I looked, 20 minutes in, we get the title sequence. We get the song... Uh, that's not the original... It's thing. not, but I like the remix. I like... I, I think it's okay. I kind of wish that the original music went there, but when I heard it, I got chills in my spine. I, 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 I felt like it too. Kid. I did feel like a kid too. I'm uh, 24 feeling like a kid. Also, during this, I kind of looked at... I was like, look at the art. And I was like, oh, this is just like straight up TV art. Like, it's not... The art in this movie is not amazing. It's just very like, yep, that's what the show looks like. It still looked good. Oh, yeah, I mean, for the, for the Blu-ray I was watching on, it was good. But I, I had a problem with... So it was Bulbasaur versus whoever. That was the first match. No one cares. The second fight was a, was Squirtle, little Squirtle. I don't know if you guys recognize remember him. Versus a Machamp, which means he went from Machop to Macho to Machamp, and Squirtle one hit kills him with Bubble. Not even Bubble Beam. He was Bubble. I the I think Machop transform evolves into Ma. Choke at 28. I'm just assuming immediately he traded them and got them to a Machamp, and I'm assuming Ash's Squirtle is like in his 60s level wise. So Squirtle, so he's just stopping Squirtle's evolution. He's holding the B. Yeah, I mean that's what he's doing with Bulbasaur. Why did he let Charizard? Why did he let Charmander evolve? Uh, Charmander evolved by himself. Obviously, we know he's the uh, bad boy of the group, and he doesn't take no shift mash. You know what? Other those, then fine. I'll give it to him. But my real, but another issue I had is so the founder the pirate trainer whatever we want to call him he gets pissed and sends out three pokemons all at once whatever he sends out a golem a pincer and a venomoth venonat venonat i'm sorry to jump in right now but i gotta say in the last 10 minutes of the movie we get a montage of like 15 different pokemon and i do love it that's a quick like hey he was like a bunch of your favorites that you like from the tv show it was a cool montage but you know do that for the end i mix them all week what? Like, we, that's like, yeah. Like, Bulbasaur is an instant solar beam. I think, I, I would consider the time he was in the air as a turn. As a 100% turn. But, he one-hit KOs the Golem, the Pincer, and the Venonath. Mind you, I had to stop the movie again to go and double-check. Golem's a ground type. Pikachu should not have been able to do any damage to that Golem. The Venonath and the Pincer, fine, they can go, they can get knocked out. But the go- the golem should have should have been perfectly fine. Ground does not work. I mean, electricity does not work on ground. And I really I, it took me out of the movie for a bit. I'm assuming that the golem maybe was already weak in HP, like he was using the Pokemon fight before. 
Okay, so the pirate captain came in and he wanted to fight Ash. Why? Because Ash was has some kind of nor- notoriety. Yeah, it is. It is like why? Like, is he famous? I don't yeah. know. So why would you come in and flow? Oh, my Pokemon's a little bit damaged. You know what? First of all, that doesn't even matter because when you electricity accept that is kind of fast. Electricity can't do any damage to Golem. Uh, Onyx. He beat Onyx that way when it rains in the gym. Isn't is on isn't Onyx just rock? I think he's rocky ground too. Well, we'll have to fact check that. Fans. <laughs> I think he's just rock though. Okay. But because I don't because Steelix isn't ground. Either way, he beats the trainer really easily. One hit kills everything. The trainer gets mad, runs away, and then during this also we're getting like also like different point of views as Mewtwo is watching him fight on it like a camera like through a TV. And uh, he's using a Fero with a camera at his neck. And I gotta say, the Fero was not a clone. Where did he get that Fero? Why is he using the Fero? Well, he did... Well, we'll get to that. But he did capture Nurse Joy. Probably he took all the Pokemons that were there for Nurse. And... So he kidnapped a bunch of people's Pokemon too? Yeah. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's fine. And all, the whole time that this battle's going on, Team Rocket also shows up. And I think... From when I was a kid, I think the best part about Team Rocket was their puns. So Pikachu one hit KOs the three of them and James comes with that's a credit on Pikachu's charge account. And it did put a pretty big smile on my face. I was smiling ear to ear. I, I enjoyed the fight too. The music was great. It was, it was a great opening sequence. Uh, so after that, finally the invitation comes with one of my favorite Pokemon of all time, Dragonite. And Gene, I don't think you know this, this is Dragonite's first appearance in the anime. Really? The so first he came out here Dragonite, first. The first time we see the silhouette of Dragonite was with the Bill's Lighthouse episode, where he was like 70 feet tall, this like mystic Pokemon that no one knew who it was. But the TV show, we get the actual Dragonite way later. So this is the debut of Dragonite for people who haven't played the game in this, in this movie. That's and nice. I love that. With his little messenger bag. I loved it. It was funny. Uh, then he flies away. Team Jesse, Rocket stops Team him. Team Rocket stops him. With a frying pan. This series gets a lot of love to frying pans. Yes, remember when it was a uh, handy dandy umbrella for Brock? So then they immediately cut to Mewtwo brings up a storm. And then everyone, Ash, Misty, and Brock are in like a harbor in a city to go to the island where Mew is holding this tournament. And... Officer Jenny, and someone who I had to look up, her name is Miranda. She is the harbor master. Because the kid, I didn't know who she was. She had like a, like a foreigner accent, kind of. She did. And she immediately, once you see her, starts talking about uh, prophecies and legends and praying that no one ever sees them and storms gonna come and wipe everyone out. Total like, I remember the kid like, who is this lady? What is she talking about? No one really seems to pay her any attention like Officer Jenny immediately cuts off and it's like so in other words you can't call the ferry I have a question um cause not not only did was that all going on inside the harbor and everything they were also put a little subplot that their nurse Jen, nurse Joy was gone and then Brock goes in and was like huh she looks familiar do does the people in this world know that the nurse Jenny's and the nurse I mean the Officer Jenny's and the Nurse Joy's all look the same, like they're all twins. They obviously do because they always make the jokes. Remember in the episode where Nurse Jenny's like talking about like her sisters, her or, or her cousins, and they're all just Nurse Jenny's and they comment about how they all look alike. It's known that they look alike. I didn't get that either. I get it's the reference for the reveal the little yeah the hologram yeah. Um, but yeah, just, I I didn't get that whole plot point anyway. So, they're told they're not allowed to go to the island. They're all like, screw it, like them and three other trainers use their Pokemon to escape to the island. However, our gang finds, in the middle of like a hurricane, a small Viking ship. And they're like, yeah, this will take us. Not even a ship, uh, a raft. It was a dinghy. Not it was a dinghy. Even, yeah. And they take it. I do love that Meowth was like... Their mermaid. Their, their um, mermaid at the front. Yeah. And he's, he's talking, and they just... It, they don't see it. Uh, so then a wave hits. They find out their team rocket. They go into their, you know, prepare for double. Their motto. Then they, you know, capsize. Uh, 
Ash and Misty bring out their Pokemon, and Brock is relegated to like, oh, I can't bring out any Pokemon. Because he's all rock. Because they're all rock, and I guess the idea sink. is to sink. Which I, I thought, like, would Geodude float? I think I, I, I think I heard he, when he's on the, it's not, it's like a negative and minus. Just, yeah, there okay. it is. So he have to be on ground to float. Other than that, he just. And my other question was, if Brock drowned at sea, what happens to the Pokeballs? Like, do they just stay there? Like a thousand years later, they found like they just like oh. I think they stay, yeah. Or like, would the water seep into the Pokeballs and they'll also drown? No, I think it's airtight. Which is also, you know, the Pokeball is a whole different podcast topic because we can go in for days about that. We'll never do that podcast, but it would be a good idea. <laughs> uh, so then they get to the shore and um, Mewtwo's assistant it greets them. And um, don't they immediately call out that she's Jenny? Like, I think Brock's immediately like, hey, I know you. You're Nurse, you're nurse Joy. And she's like, no, that's not me. I've been here my whole life. And they're like, okay. And they move on. I, it was confusing. I didn't understand this whole thing while I was there. Yeah, for me, it was just like, like, what, what is the whole, like, like, he was like, oh, aren't you the Nurse Joy from that island? And he's like, no, that's not me. And you know what? I can, I can, ex- I can understand them going, oh, okay, I believe that. Because there's like hundreds of them. They're everywhere. They, they only change their design after, I think, Hoenn, maybe? Or, like, they go to Sinnoh? Yeah, after that, like, every series. They change, like, Sinnoh. hairstyles yeah. or whatever. And the Poker, like, the, mar- the Poker, I can't think the... The logo? No, what's the, uh, the Chance? hospital called? Pokemon Center? The Pokemon Center, I forgot it. The Pokemon Center changes also a lot, too. Um, so then, we, so then, I, we, we have been talking about that, like, throughout this whole series, like, there's sprinkles of, like, Mew just dilly-dallying throughout, like, everywhere he goes. So the next scene, Mew goes to the island and he plays on the windmill. And it's very adorable. It's very adorable. Uh, and then finally, I, well, I have to point this out. So they go inside after, like, the cutscene of Mew. And we get maybe one of the worst 3D effects. Very early 3D effects that I've ever seen with those giant 3D doors closing behind them. I, I think I I didn't think too much of it because I was I was almost always remembered it was an old movie. It looked good, don't get me wrong, but I was like, I'm expecting like the bad 3D with it. But it was only that one scene. They held the shrink. They did like not a lot of it was 3D. I'm pretty sure like that's the only noticeable one. So they go inside, and then we see the other three trainers are already there because they're much better than Ash and everyone else, and they have like some weird like they're just all hanging out. And I gotta tell you, one of these trainers really bothered me. And that is the, uh, the fat guy in a tank top with shorts. Um, his whole thing was water Pokemon. And Gene, did you notice one of his Pokemon was? He had a Gyarados. Right. He had a Golduck. And then he had a Nidoqueen. That's what bothered you? I was confused because I was like, I'm pretty sure his thing is water. And why is it a Nido Queen? And then I realized, oh, she's the same shade as blue as all the other water Pokemon he has. And I was like, pretty annoyed. Over an, a tight mismatch? Uh, yes. I was like, god damn it, Nintendo, or Pokemon Company, whoever made this movie. You didn't, like, you could find one of the water Pokemon, you had to, like, stick to a color, like they're a Power Ranger group. Like, yeah, it can only be, like, blue. It can't be, like, you know. He didn't have a starter? Oh, no, the other two had starters. Oh, it was okay. Yeah. So it was three trains. Okay. Yeah, his main thing was the Gyarados. Then they introduce Mew. Two, he comes down, kind of surprises everyone that a Pokemon is talking. Mm-hmm. What is, does he surprise? He does surprise like Ash and everyone, even though they do know of Meow. They were like, "Oh, he's talking to us telepathically." And then immediately Mew is up being an a-hole. He starts flinging the fat guy. Uh, then his, he has his Gyarados attack, and which kind of surprised me. I always thought Gyarados moved. Maybe like a snake? He moves like a slug. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't was, think of it, it. It was kind of like... I can see my surprise. I had to rewind it. Because like, is he like slug moving? Uh, so Mewtwo beats him. Goes on a good speech. Then just lets Nurse Joy go. Yeah, he's just like, I'm going to erase your memory. And you're, you're, you're free. No, he didn't erase your memory. He was just like, uh, I don't need you anymore. No, no, he was like, I'm going to erase your memory of the mo- of the time you had with me. 
Because oh, then she was just like with him. So after that, then he goes on to want to capture all their Pokemon. And he has those pretty cool Pokeballs. We've never seen them in the game. I'd like to see them. I would 100% love them. I was surprised no um, no one ever put them in like... Remember back in uh, Game Shock and stuff? When you used to catch other trainers Pokemon? I was surprised that was like this distinct Pokeball you needed to use. That would have been pretty cool. But he captures all their Pokemon. They're all running, trying to get away. And then... So they catch Pikachu. Pikachu's the only one that puts up a fight. I just want to say for this whole scene... I was sitting there being like, why don't you just put your Pokemon in the Pokeballs? It will solve all your problems. Then they thought about it like a couple seconds later. And they're like, yeah, we'll do it. And I was like, you see, this guy's using his head. You think if they put them in their bags, though, they wouldn't have gotten them? I don't know about that, too. Like, what's like, the level like of a... contact? I think if you put them, like, in a place where it's like, at least, like, a layer, I think it'd work. Because then, or, or, you know what, though? I wouldn't, I would have totally took these Pokeballs that, like, touch you and you're caught. <laughs> Uh, so they catch Pikachu, Ash goes after him down like a tube, and then, uh, for, so for this whole next couple of scenes, I'm assuming that Misty, Brock, and all the other trainers are just chilling there for the view? I also want to state, for this movie, we could have really done it without Brock and Misty. Misty especially. Brock was there. We needed a super. We need he did. Super. Because one thing that had me dying, this is going back in the beginning, when the hologram came in... His li- and his line, word for word, she's really small, but really pretty. It's a hologram. Like, the, the whole small part, it was... He, what did he mean to touch upon that they had, like, Star Wars level of technology when it comes to holograms just chilling in the world? I mean, I'm not surprised. Because they can transfer Pokemon instantly. Ash was just... The, the one, one... They were so advanced. If you, catch more than, if you catch more than six Pokemon, then the Pokemon just disappears out of your hand you know and goes to you. I, I was like, this is next, oh, next level shit. We missed a major scene. The starter fight scenes. The Charizard, Squirtle, uh, Charmander. Jeez. The Charizard, uh, Blastoise, and Venusaur I, versus the clones. Because he does, he talks about the cloning process and right. how they're like... Better than the originals. Better than the originals. Because his whole motive for this movie is uh, that clones are better. Mm-hmm. More superior. And that everyone else needs... Which is not the case in the Japanese, but we'll talk about that later. So, the Venusaur and the um, Blastoise are owned by the other two trainers, hmm. and they have nicknames, I think, like, Fruit Group or something like that, and then Shell Shocker. Right. And they're all, they each hit, like, their big moves, Hydro Pump, uh, Razor Leaf, like, they hit their big moves, but the other ones, one hit KO them. Mine, uh, also, I feel, I could feel Ash's content, because he also felt like, because they, they were just, like... They would call him their Pokemon by their nickname. And then when he sent out Charizard, he was like, you don't have a nickname, but go Charizard. And I was like, I, was, I didn't really expect him to actually acknowledge that. That seemed like, it made it a little, a little sad. I was like, maybe you should have nicknamed him. I think he was trying to like, overcome, like, uh, he was feeling jealous. Like, no, I also love my Pokemon. I'm just like, you know, not going to give him the name. Mm-hmm. But uh, the Charizard, he pulls up, he puts up the best fight out of all of them, but really he's just like, just taking the most hits. But he's like, he has a strong jaw, he's like getting hit. Never lands one move, and then a seismic toss. That was brutal. It brutal is, head. Uh, it, it Fs him up, and then we get in the hole. Now they're kept on the Pokemon. Mm. So Ash goes after his Pikachu, and then finally, we haven't been talking about talking about it much, but like Jesse and James and Mew are like having their own like side adventure, kind of. Which was really fun, because um, the way their cloning process works is. They, the Pokeball comes, and it's on a conveyor belt. And every time a Pokemon's DNA is collected, it shows a silhouette. And for all the fans of the Pokemon original series, you know every time we're about to go to commercials, they're like, who's that Pokemon? And then when you come back, it'll tell you the name. So every time it'll come through, it'll be like, like for the first one, they, it was Meowth. So like, who's that Pokemon? Meowth! They did it for Pikachu and... I don't, I don't remember if they did for anyone else. We did Pikachu and Meowth. I think oh, that was the only two. Well, I guess number 25 and number 52. But I thought I thought it was a nice little homage, like, callback to the original yeah. series. Well, I mean, really I mean at that, at that point, ongoing. yeah, it was, during, it was ongoing. So. But, so Ash somehow wrecks the machine just by, like, biting, like, a bunch of mechanical hands and, like, running out of it. But it destroys the machine. That, for some reason, releases all the Pokemon. 
And before, while this, while he's breaking out of the machine, the clones of the original of all the trainers Pokemon are cloned, and they go up to meet with Mew. And so, he's telling. So he's he monologues. I'm assuming this minute, like Ash is, he's got a break because he misses maybe like a 30 minute monologue from Mew about like just the same thing. Clones are better. So Ash just also, all of Misty's Pokemon are missing, because how do you explain how Goldeen's gonna chill in like the ground? Goldeen is shown to be cloned. There's a bunch of water Pokemon showing you clone that they never do anything with. Because it will make sense. I'm assuming they're still living. Because they'll just flop around. Yeah. Uh, terrorizing the seas, probably. So, we got a huge explosion in the main room. And we get the cheesiest, most awkward sequence scene ever. God. Where there's a drum roll. Just like a little, just a drum roll, no other music. Ash, it's somehow the scene looks like it was fast forwarded and slowed down. All at the same time. It was so weirdly like paced. Ash comes in with all the Pokemon and he goes, No Mewtwo, I won't let you. In the most just cringiest this all around cringiest scene. It didn't end there. Their music choice for this, I did not like it at all. For the fight? Yeah. Oh. The whole that that weird Well first brother. Mew, first Mew comes up, shows up, and we're going to deviate a little bit here, because what do you know about the Japanese Mew? Nothing really. Okay, so for a, a while, there was a fan theory going around from a mistranslation, from what I understand, where it was believed that Mew throughout this movie is kind of a dick, talking about how clones should be exterminated. Did you ever hear about this? So, no. yeah, if you look it up, there's a whole belief for like a while that like the original Japanese translation of Mew had him just talking down to Mewtwo the whole time about how clones are like abominations, they should be destroyed. This is Mew? Yeah, Mew. The adorable little thing. And it, Mew talk to the Japanese almost, though? Yeah. You can almost, like, like, like um, Mewtwo had a psychic link. And you can almost see it because every time Mewtwo talks, Mew is just like looking around, ignoring him. And it's like, oh yeah, you, I can kind of see him being an a-hole. But really, I looked it up, the original translation is, um, that Mew is like, no, 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 you're kind of juicing them. If you take away all their powers, the originals will be better. And this sets up in the dub where he goes, because Mew just like, I'm going to take away all their powers to have them fight. Which is really like, uh, why would you do that? You have the clear advantage. Uh, but the, the Japanese, it's like explained, like, no, no, because Mew is kind of almost goading him into it. Like, no, 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 let's see how they do without like the superpowers. Hmm. So then we get Brother, My Brother. And it is... Horrible. Okay, I'm so glad we could agree because I did not want to go into a whole fight about this. It was a really, it was it sounded more of a opening song. It was a weird song choice that it would have fit for an end scene. Hell, I don't even think it opened. I think it, I think that's an end that's an end song. Where everyone's like, some people say to listen to it, but you didn't have to. But it was like the main like conflict of the fight. Like everyone's just going together, butt in heads. But I, I also think it was a problem that they didn't give the other Pokemon the clone colors because I was I think that was like a point like you don't know who's who but I was so confused. The yeah, I did see they got lazy like they gave the main the three starters their color swap or not color swap they gave them like the scars or whatever. Yeah. But I think the way they kind of saved it was if you saw they were losing, then they were the originals and the ones who were winning were the clones. Because all of the... But that's not true, because from the Japanese side, you get that the clones are that the original are winning. But they had the starters. It was mostly the clones that were beating the shit out of the starters. No, no, no. The whole point is that the originals, Ash's originals, mm. starters, were beating, the, were beating the clones. Also, it was another interesting fact, that Ash's Pokemon were the only ones that they wanted to fight. When you see the charge, when the battle starts, Squirtle, Bulbasaur, Char- uh, and... And Pikachu look at the other Pokemon running into each other. They don't. They didn't want to fight. Charizard neither. Or uh, Charizard was not. This, the the main the final evolution of the starters were not in this fight scene at all. No, no, no I'm sorry. They were. I yeah, they Charizard were. Was, Charizard fought. I think, I think Charizard did fight. Yeah, but uh, even Misty Psyduck went went at it, which is my favorite of all the little fight scenes. The so slap. They slap and they go slap sigh slap duck. I loved it. It made me laugh even now. It was so hilarious. 
But um, so the fight's going on. Mew and Mewtwo are fighting. You get that emotional Pikachu slap thing where Pikachu, Ash's Pikachu is accusing the fight and they're the ones slapping him and crying. Let's talk about this one scene where it's Misty, Brock, and Nurse Joy all in the corner saying, this is not how it should be. Pokemon shouldn't fight each other. This is wrong. They shouldn't be. And I'm sitting there, I'm just like, huh? Well, like, isn't that all you ever do? So I was thinking, they were like, they, the way they were talking, they made it seem like, well, if we ever get out of this, we're never going to fight again. And I sat there. They did flip-flop back and forth during the dialogue of, this isn't how Pokemon should fight, and Pokemon should be fighting. I was very confused in the message of what they were trying to say, because they just kept going back and forth. It, okay, so not to, you know, jump to the end, but I sat there and I was like, okay, this is 100% a, has to be a different timeline, because the way they're making it sound like they're going to abolish all Pokemon battling. But... At the end, they retcon themselves and just be like, okay, we're going to erase your memory. And like, really? These so, guys would have like stopped the whole Pokemon fighting, but you were just like, we're going to erase your memory. Keep moving. So, Mew and Mewtwo are really going at it, and finally, they're like, okay, we're going to end it in this one... I think all the other Pokemon stopped to watch. We're going to end it in this one big blast, and, P- and Ash jumps in the middle of the, of, of the blast, and he gets turned to stone. Very slowly. Like, he does like, a little kneel... Then throws his hands up, then lies down, and the stoning process is complete. He's 100% carbonite. And I gotta tell you, this kind of, like, once the fight starts, I've kind of checked out this movie. It's it's really bad. So, that whole stone thing, was that just a thing, was this a thing for kids to, sh- like, to show that he died, but you can't really show it? Because it was really weird, like, they were firing two blasts that looked like just Shadow Ball. So the Shadow Ball turned humans to stone? Like, what was the end goal? Like, I think they were gonna... like, we can't kill him, but he has to die metaphorically or something. This, this movie had a lot of weird... To, to backtrack a bit, there was this little scene where the two Meowths were fighting, and then they were like, how can I trust you? You look different than me. Mind you, I think both Meowths looked the same. They didn't give him that extra special stripe. But, but they didn't give the clone the ability to speak to Right, but he was like, oh, you look different than me. And I was like, this is a really weird thing for kids, because I don't think kids are going to sit there and be like, okay, this is going to totally end bullying and whatever problems I have at school, because now I'm going to include everyone because of a Pokemon movie. It was a weird little message. I did like the Meowth dialogue. I was, it, I, it, was, it was kind of interesting to me that, like, Meowth, of all the ones, was one like, I'm not going to fight. And his clone was also like, yeah, there's no real point. I don't know if it's a... It, it, Maybe I'm looking too much into it, and it could be stupid, like, hey, they're lazy cats. It could be that, too. But uh, I did like that. So Pikachu goes over to Ash and kind of is, like, nudging him. And then he starts crying. And if you didn't watch the opening origin of Mew, you wouldn't really understand this, because that does go into what the tears are. In the when the in that opening ten minutes, they do talk about like how they think Pokemon tears are like these healing like abilities. I thought the harbor master had said that when they were in the harbor. No, 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 she was just talking about. She was basically like talking about Noah's Ark. <laughs> That's what she really was explaining. Uh, it's in it's in the opening when they they're talking about like the scientists like maybe that because the whole thing is about bringing his daughter back. Mm-hmm. So he's like maybe that's one way. Uh, so. I mean, they didn't explain how the tears go to the face and glow and, like, twinkling go to ash. So, wait, let me ask. Was Mewtwo... Was that whole research where they made Mewtwo... Were they working for Team Rocket? From what I can understand, in the Japanese, in the original uh, language, it, it's no. But just for the English, it was like, you know, just put it in the kids. But I didn't mind. It's, I liked it. That was the kind of dream eyes that was behind the whole thing. Um, so, all the Pokemon start crying, even the ones that don't know him. I don't like the image of Gyarados crying. It kind of really some, of the, some of the crimes was yeah. pretty... Like that Wigglytuff, that was kind of just like... Uh, I can see that one crying, but not, not Gyarados. Not Gyarados, not Nino, maybe Nino King. But definitely not Gyarados, and definitely not Rhyhorn. So they cry, he comes back to life. So Ash is brought back, and... The movie just really kind of ends fast. Like, Mewtwo talks about... He gives a pretty awesome speech that's, you know, people kind of remember about how it's not what's inside. It's like, you know, 
it's, it's a good speech. Uh, and then he just, for some reason, it's like, me and the clones are leaving to where? I don't know. And then he just erases their memory? Not only that, I have a question. Can he go back in time? Or is it that? Yes. Or did he just move them back? So, yeah, when I was watching, I was a little confused whether they went back in time or... Because how many people's memory... Was he erasing, like, hundreds of people's memories? It would have to be just the people in the harbor. Because he created the storm. I think the storm yeah, was well, still they, raging. They, I acknowledge that they had the storm. But, like, th- th- was everyone in that harbor, like, why am I here? What's happening? Because well, that's what they were like, Ash and everyone. They were like, uh, yeah, we just came here to... Why were we here? Um, I was also wondering, like... Because there, there were multiple trainers who went, right? It was just those three or four that survived. That made it. Yeah, right. no, they showed the harbor was full. I, I think all the whole floor was like... They all they went. They all wanted to go there. So there was like maybe like a hundred people. But they did not make it clear whether or not he can go back in time. They had, they a, can't, hold, they had to erase a... Like a a mass of people because Nurse Dora was missing and she was and he made it so she never went missing. So like are there trainers she out was there? gone for a while. Are there trainers there whose Pokemon died and he erased those Pokemon's memories? Oh he erased the trainers' memories of those Pokemon? Maybe like, getting the clone. I thought he had six Pokemon. I guess I always had five. <laughs> Did he just uh, wipe out people's memories of their dead Pokemon? I would hope he would just replace them with one of the clones. That's messed up. I don't think so. I don't think anyone will tell the difference. Well, do the clones have the memories? No. That's, I could do that. That's, that's... You, for you, if you had a Pokemon and you switched out of a clone, the only thing that would happen, you'd be like, what happened? I trained you with all these tricks, and now you forgot it. You would just be yelling at him for that. You'd be oh, yelling at Bulbasaur for actually, that. Actually, the opposite, I'm assuming he'd be super OP. Like, man, you really got good. What did this, uh, Weedle, like, just start tanking? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think... That's about it. It was a really good end scene, you know, them traveling, looking over at sunset. It was, it was a really just nice movie. Like, I did watch the whole end credits. And I, I did watch it too. I wasn't. I was like, I kept laughing because it's just like a bunch of photos of their backs while they're like looking out at like different landscapes. I thought it was cool. And I liked their song. It was. It was good. Uh, yeah, it was alright. Overall, I would say a pretty good movie. Not my favorite. Um, but it's definitely in the top five for me. I love 3000. Um, I keep calling it 3000. Because I, I, cause the number was weird. It was like, Pokemon the first movie, Pokemon 2000, Pokemon third movie. Um, well, I mean, Pokemon the one, third movie. two, and three in each one of those titles. Yeah, I know, but why go 2000? Because it came out in the year 2000. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, but um, for me personally, I like the whole Entei movie. When the Crystal Castle, Entei, Rykov, and Suicune. They just have a mystical, like, fantasy vibe to it. It did. And, and it also really had too. Professor Oak and... Oh, no, no, it did have... No, no, the second movie also had Professor Oak and his mom. Dahlia. His mom's name is Dahlia? Yeah, isn't it Dahlia Ketchum? Huh, very nice. I miss mom, of course. Well, we all want to know, did Professor Oak send Ash away to his mom? Obviously. Yeah. But then he couldn't, obviously, because Mr. Mom was like, no, no, no. <laughs> Gave him that confusion. And then gave his mom that double slap. After watching Detective Pikachu, there's actually a really creepy image in my head now, so I'm not with it. Well, especially the origin story of that. I, uh, did you see the, um, uh, Ash's mom's, Mr. Mime's origin story about how she has it? Did he start as Mime Jr.? No. She thought, like, this random Mr. Mime was Ash in a costume. I remember that! Yes, and then she's like, okay, you're not? Oh, you're real Mr. Mime? I guess I'll just, like, adopt you into the family. So, we always thought that Mr. Mime was, like, Ash's creepy uncle that just kept staying with him, banging his mom. <laughs> but in reality, that's, like, his adopted brother that she clearly loves more than him. Maybe still banging him. Probably. Alright. So, overall, I would like the movie. I'd give it a 7 out of 10. 7.5, maybe. I'll, I'll even it out. Give it an 8. So... So we want to thank everyone for listening. Uh, this is the second episode of the Great Boys Podcast. Uh, I am Super Kami William. Mag Daddy Jean. And we will be back eventually with either the first season of SAO or Fairy Tale Dragon Cry. And we are...